What's going on y'all? It's Tyler. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for checking out this video of mine. In this video, I'm going to talk about the firmware update that Blackmagic Design just released for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now, in this firmware update 6.1, it's supposed to fix a lot of the issues that I've had with this camera since I got it back in October, specifically around battery life and the battery indicator being accurate, uh, the Samsung T5 SSD being recognized, as well as improved audio performance out of the 3.5mm input jack, which I'm really excited to test out. This firmware update also addresses improvements in audio Audio monitoring latency as well as autofocus performance. Now I don't have any micro four thirds lenses and I'm hopeful but doubtful that it actually is going to fix audio autofocus performance with the Metabones adapter. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the release notes and where to download the firmware. So let's hop over to the computer, let's update this firmware and then we can start testing things out and see what improvements have been made. Okay, firmware's updated. Here's a couple of things that I've noticed. Number one, SSD drive, ready to go. It recognizes it every single time. I've turned the camera on and off 20 or 30 times and it's been working every single time. So super happy there. The next thing is the audio menu. And this is actually a nice touch uh, on, the, on the UI perspective because now you can't accidentally choose, you know, a line level and a mic level on the left and right channels. So for example, if you have a shorter mic or a road video mic or something like that, going into the three and a half mil, say you have the mic level on the left side of the menu, on the right side, if you try to go to the line level for three and a half mil, it's grayed out, which is basically indicating that you can't use that. Next up is audio. Now I did a test with the Rode Video Mic Me, and this is the same mic as the Rode Video Micro that a lot of you are familiar with, but this one is just the cell phone version and I have this little adapter cable by Rode which basically lets you plug it in to the camera just like you would with any other mic. So I used this to test it out and the first thing I did was before I did the update I brought this up to 100% which is really where you could only get usable audio levels. So after the update I set the camera back up with this mic and did a test so we can kind of get a comparison. I, was, I did some at 75%, some at 100% just to see what the audio levels would be like. This is the Rode Video Mic Me plugged into the 3.5mm input on the pocket camera. Audio level is at 100% to get a signal. This is the Rode Video Mic Me plugged into the 3.5mm input on the pocket camera. Audio level is at 100% to get a signal. Okay, this is after the update. The same mic, same place. I am at 75% level now as opposed to 100%, so let's see how this sounds. Back up to 100%, see how this sounds. Okay, this is after the update. The same mic, same place. I am at 75% level now as opposed to 100%, so let's see how this sounds. Back up to 100%, see how this sounds. This is the Rode Video Mic Me plugged into the 3.5mm input on the pocket camera. Audio level is at 100% to get a signal. I am at 75% level now as opposed to 100%, so let's see how this sounds. Back up to 100%, see how this sounds. I'm really excited that this mic is now able to be used for scratch audio and stuff like that just because it's a lighter mic, it, it doesn't take up as much room in the bag. And if I'm flying on a gimbal and I'm outside and I don't want to use the internal mics, I can throw this on there and it'll clean up the wind noise and stuff like that, but I'll still be able to get useful audio whether it's for ambient noise or just reference audio in general. And battery life definitely seems to be an improvement. I can definitely stretch it out a little longer than I was before, which is super helpful for running and gunning and now that I have an accurate battery meter and indication I can actually rely on it to know when I need to switch my batteries instead of it just shutting off without any notice. Now I know that this firmware update doesn't include the Blackmagic RAW which is what a lot of people are hoping for but since it wasn't released in this firmware update means they're still fine-tuning it but I'm glad that they still released this firmware for bug fixes and improvements and stuff like that because those things are super important and I'm way happier that they decided to release that now and hold off and release Blackmagic RAW at a later date. If you've updated the firmware definitely leave a comment below. I'd love to know your experience and your thoughts on the firmware update. I for one am super happy about it. If you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and i will see you in the next video peace